Welcome to another episode of In The Workshop. In this one I will be fitting new crankshaft main bearings into an aluminium casting. It sounds simple enough until you do it wrong and the casting breaks. I ordered the bearings yesterday from modelfixings.com and you can also find their website at the address modelfixings.co.uk. I was very impressed with the service and the quality of the bearings. If you look on the packaging you can see what the sizes are. These are definitely the bearing sizes for the OS FS60 engine that I have, which is an early one. The smaller bearing, the front one, has an internal diameter of 3 8 of an inch, an imperial measurement. As you can see, there's only a shield on one side. I've just duplicated the original. The reason for the shield not being on the other side is so that oil can get in from the crankcase. Currently the bearing is packed with grease, so it should be okay to start with. The bearing is a perfect fit on the crankshaft and the bearing is a slightly tight fit in the front bearing housing. Everything is okay, it actually needs to be like that. Before starting a job like this you really do need to sit and think. The casting is aluminium and it's therefore quite fragile. Using brute force and hammering the bearing into position in the housing is not a good idea. You can of course use a socket which is just the right size to fit inside the housing and hammer the bearing in that way. This method is also not recommended and you must not put any pressure on the centre part of the ball race. And don't do it this way either. What you need to do is warm up the outer casting. I don't mean heat it to such a high temperature that it melts. I'm warming it up with a very small blowtorch, very slowly and evenly. This will of course expand the metal and aluminium expands a great deal more than steel. A few years ago I went to see my good friend Rob. You will have seen him in my videos. He's the man who helped me move the Smart and Brown lathe. I sold the Smart and Brown lathe to him and I bought it back off him too. Anyway on this particular day when I went to visit him he was in the middle of trying to fix his washing machine. He'd removed a ball race from the aluminium casting that supported the main drum. But the new one he'd bought didn't fit, so I suggested that he warmed up the casting with a blowtorch and maybe while I was there having a cup of tea, put the bearing in the freezer. After this, the housing got larger and the bearing got smaller and it fitted very easily into position. Once the temperature of both of the components had equalised, then it was a tight fit. This is how I would normally attempt to fit a bearing into an aluminium or any other kind of housing. I gently squeeze the bearings into position using my bench vise. First the rear one, then the front one. And that's it, the job was really simple, but if the tolerances are really tight and the bearing doesn't fit, just try freezing the bearing and heating the housing, just like I did on the washing machine. A test fit of the crankshaft into the bearings tells me that everything is perfectly aligned. And now it's assembly time, starting off with a really good oiling of all the components inside the engine. It's very important to make sure that you align the peg on the crank pin with the disc that spins the camshaft. I was really pleasantly surprised that the gasket didn't need replacing, so I can reuse the original gasket without any problems. Next part of the job is to just refit the front part of the crankcase to the main crankcase. And as I just mentioned, it's very important to make sure that the peg on the end of the crank pin engages with the slot in the disc that rotates the camshaft. The last part of this job is obviously to tighten up the bolts using an Allen key. Here are the two original ball racers looking very rusty in a small red plastic box, ready for the bin. I can't make a video about fitting new main bearings without test running the engine to see what it sounds like. I've fitted a 12x6 glass filled nylon propeller and it's ready to go into the test bed. Before fitting it into the test bed though I thought it was a good idea to spin up the engine. Health and safety warning this is not a good idea. The tip of the propeller is very close to my wrist and I am not yet ready to commit suicide. Now I have a fuel tank using a couple of rubber bands I fit it to the mounting on the test rig. You will notice that one of the pieces of silicone rubber pipe is fitted to the pressure nipple on the exhaust pipe of the engine. I'm going to check that the pump in the power panel works ok. I've connected the two pieces of silicone rubber tubing. The pipe with the fuel filter goes into the fuel bottle and the other pipe goes to the tank filler. 
I'm only going to part fill the tank, and with the amount of fuel that I'm putting in the tank, this engine would run for quite a long time. Four strokes are quite economical. I plugged up one of the pieces of tubing and fitted the original pipe back onto the pressure nipple. The difference in the sound of the engine was quite amazing. To conclude this episode, this is how the engine sounded before I changed the main bearings. And now it sounds like this. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.